Men in their 30s and up with no kids or wife, how was your life? Story 1. 42 here. In my 30s, it was awesome. I had a lot of friends I'd spend time with and have a blast. My siblings had kids, so I got to do the uncle thing and enjoyed that experience. But a lot of friends had kids and stopped hanging out. My social circle has shrunk dramatically due to family, careers, moving, and it does get pretty boring. I no longer want to go out and party, but I don't have anyone at home to chill with. There's lots of freedom, but lots of loneliness as well. Story 234. Male. Single. I'm currently close to the happiest I've ever been. I'm in the best shape of my life after dedicating a couple of years to consistent strength training and cardio. I've been improving my professional knowledge set and experience rapidly during working on personal projects in my free time in a way where the benefits of this rapid growth are cascading into my career. I'm hoping to evolve that project into a business in the next few years, which is my main personal goal I'm excited to pursue every day because it feels more like a game than work to me. And furthermore, I love my job and my team at work. I struggle to convince myself to date because I don't enjoy the process and have a hard time finding what I'm looking for in a partner. On rare occasion, I feel a little bit lonely, but generally the loneliest I've felt is spending time with people who don't get me at all. Being alone is way better than feeling out of place or misunderstood. Story 3. I keep moving up the ladder in work. I have an abundance of free time and picked up a bunch of hobbies. Travel five, six times a year to places that feel like a dream. I can't spend my money fast enough and it keeps growing exponentially. I have many close friends because I get to see them a lot, basically, whenever we have free time. But at the end of the day, I'm lonely and want more out of life. Story 433 and got dumped after 12 years last year. At first, I couldn't see how I could live life without someone at my side, but I'm doing good now. People always kept telling me that I can now do what I want, but we both were always pretty self-sufficient. But now I can really do whatever I want, whenever I want, without questions asked or getting a weird look from someone. Life goes on. I found new hobbies, got a new job, etc. There are still some dark moments where I get a little sad that I'm alone and got no one to share exciting things with, but hey... There is someone out there for every one of us. Story 5. I'm about to go back to school for a major career change starting this fall that will take about three years. And I can say without any doubt that I would not be able to do it if I had a wife and kids. I would probably be stuck doing manual labor for the rest of my life just to keep everyone fed and happy. Story 6. You can't do everything you want to do. There's just not enough time and not enough you. No wife and kids? Cool then. You have time to do all the activities you want, and you don't have the constraint of other people's wants and needs weighing on you. But that means you don't get to have the super deep spouse and children connections and dependencies that create bonds that become part of your self-identity. Those things can be super fulfilling. On the other side, if you're married with kids, you have no time for all the other stuff, and your life is no longer 100% yours to control, and that can suck. The trade-off is you get those soul-deep connections that we, as higher reasoning apes, are kind of hardwired to seek and feel fulfilled by. No one is 100% happy all the time. They might never waver in their choice, but that doesn't mean there aren't moments when they yearn for the perks of the opposite lifestyle. I'm super happy with my choice in this regard, but at least once a week I wish I could jump to the alternate reality where I lived the opposite lifestyle for like 24 hours just because there's fun stuff over there also. Story 7. It sucks. Was engaged a couple years ago, but it didn't work out. Had to sell our place, and now I'm back in an apartment and worried about finding a life partner. I've been seeing someone in the last year, but it hasn't been that serious. I feel like time is slipping away. Trying to work out and focus on hobbies and spend good time with family and do a good job at work. Also have lots of free time for video games, but I'd rather raise kids at this point. Story 8. Honestly, ups and downs. I have the ability to do what I want, whenever I want. I save easily or buy whatever I feel like. Spend time with whomever I want without guilt or time restraints. Sometimes I feel lonely and wish for someone there. But after a while, I remember how exhausting relationships are. How much constant work they are to always feel not good enough anyway. Then I carry on. I haven't needed a woman in six years. Story 9. Horrible. Lonely. I spend my days cuddling my kitty as I trudge through life. I watch the kids every day when they get home from school, wishing I had my own. I want a wife. I want a daughter. I want a son. I want someone to love. But a poor ogre of a man like me is forever condemned to be alone. Story 10. My life is peaceful, just the way I like it. I'm 35, no kids, never married. 
Had only a handful of actual relationships, and that's it. Currently not looking for a partner. I have friends to keep me company and a pet cat. That's more than enough for me. I never wanted kids or to get married since I was a teenager. Seems so stressful to me. Maybe because I'm more of an introvert. I'm very happy and definitely the happiest out of my friend group. They have kids and in relationships. At this point in life, I don't ever see myself getting into a serious relationship or living with someone else. I'd hate it. I'm a free bird just doing what I want, when I want. Story 11. 34 and not seeing any signs of change. It's a fine line to tightrope walk between freedom and loneliness. The deafening silence when you get home from work for those few hours before bedtime can be deafening at times. As you grow, social groups can shrink as other obligations and responsibilities take hold. Time friends spend doing extracurriculars for their kids become time that you find yourself without anything to do. So you try to find things to fill that space. Story 12. Right out of college, I chose to be a live-in caregiver to my grandma for four years. Felt like I was single parenting for a while. Now that I'm on to the next chapter of my life, I find myself enjoying not being responsible for another life. But still find myself planning my days, like I have to be home to look after the house at night. Grandma had dementia. I was constantly in fear she would go on an adventure. I keep reminding myself someday I'll be ready to take on that parent-spouse role. But for now, I'm still making up for those years of living in grandma's basement. Story 13. I'm honestly at a fantastic point in my life. Started a new job with a retirement plan, eating healthy and working out, focusing on my hobbies with my limited free time, enjoying being able to live life how I want. I live alone and the loneliness creeps in sometimes. I find it damn near impossible to date due to my location and lack of a physical third place. And it can be overwhelming having to rely solely on myself. But I think I'm happy. It could absolutely be worse, so I'm grateful to be where I am for now. Story 14. I love it. It's not for everyone, but I also don't think it's that different from people who are married with children. I can occasionally feel lonely, but no more than I hear friends and family who are married feel lonely. Things can feel mundane, but not more often than I hear others expressing those same feelings. Basically, it's just a different brand of living, but it still has the same basic pros and cons. They just look different. Story 1533. Pretty damn great. Good job. Amazing friends. Most of them are married now and some have kids, and it's been absolutely awesome being able to be a part of their lives. I thoroughly enjoy the freedom to do whatever I want and when I want to. Do I want to go to the bar because my friend asked me to come? Then I go. Do I want to play video games all night? Then I play video games all night. Do I want to go on a spontaneous trip somewhere? Then I go. I have no real desire to settle down with someone, so I'm perfectly content by myself. That being said, if the right person came my way, then awesome. If she never comes my way, it's still awesome. I'll be happy one way or the other. Story 16. A lot guys here mention loneliness and I'm 32, but I literally don't feel that at all. I think most guys nowadays don't have a sense of purpose. And I can understand that if you're a guy without a partner or children, that bigger sense of purpose isn't there. I learned this after my dad got cancer, and I realized how short life is. For me, my purpose has been working on my business. I started to try and help solve problems in the world. My company designs bespoke chips for various applications through FPGAs and custom hardware designs. Engineering to me is really rewarding and I get that sense of pride. My company is making a difference and helping folks out across various industries. I get not everyone can or should start a business for purpose, but there are many other ways to get that feeling. Art or content creation, social work, healthcare, etc. Things that connect people or support something bigger than yourself is a great way to feel proud of what you do and like you're not just doing something useless. A lot of friends I've lost contact over the years with were due to just either them settling down, which is awesome, and I understand once family starts, you don't have much time for too much else. Or the other scenario is the friend was someone who wasn't ambitious enough, or I felt they were kind of immature or holding me back in some way due to them either complaining a lot about things they had control over but were too lazy to tackle properly. So I didn't want that energy to be around me. And I found guys who are more positive and less pessimistic and have an overall better work ethic on getting shit done and getting it done the right way. More guys need better goals today than just wasting away at a dead-end job because your soul will die before you do working for someone else's dream. Build up step-by-step step to your dream however you can. Story 17. As much as everyone says amazing they can do this or that, I personally find it extremely lonely, 
boring, and sometimes I go weeks or more without wanting to exist. Although I met someone I enjoy recently, a lot, it's hard to accept someone else isn't just going to leave. Chapter 18. Living with my GF of three years. I'm fucking exhausted from working 50 hours a week, but at least I don't have to worry about putting a kid through college one day. Got a vasectomy two years ago because being child-free is too good for me to give up. I, we can come and go as we please without having to wrangle a toddler and do the whole, okay, where are your shoes? Okay, put on your coat. Yes, you have to wear a coat routine. Story 19. 38. It's great and end. It sucks. I absolutely love having the freedom to work whenever I want. Not work, travel, get drunk, eat, not eat, sleep, ignore an alarm, watch a movie, take a shit with the door open, whatever. It's true freedom. As long as I have the money, which can be difficult, don't get me wrong, I can basically do or not do whatever I want, whenever I want. To this point, my buddies who've been married are all doing well. No one's been divorced yet. They all have better incomes than I do. They all get to come home to someone. They all have someone to talk to, even if their interests aren't aligned. As far as kids go, I don't think it's really for me. I've lived with my sister, her husband, and their kids. There's so many days where the kids are kind of shitty. The house is constantly a mess. I have a bit of a short fuse, too, so while I would never hit anyway, it's just not in me. I will get very frustrated with people for minor stuff. If I'm in a bad mood and you chew with your mouth open, it'll bother me to no end. Things like that. When I was a kid, my mom used to snap at us sometimes if we asked what's for dinner without asking how her day was first or whatever. I never really understood it then, but now I totally get it. I'm kind of immature too and not the best with money. I'd rather have fun and worry about it later. Having to be responsible for a kid is just not a good idea, I don't think. So unless someone ends up finding my fat ass and not-so-sunny disposition suddenly attractive, I'm pretty sure I'll be single until I die. Not the end of the world, but also maybe not ideal. It is what it is. Story 20. I'm 49, pretty lonely. Most evenings are punctuated with multiple, how did I fuck up this bad, haven't had a date in a few years, fully willing to concede my interests are outside normal for my area. Bit of a geek. Bitterness sets in and can make me unpleasant to be around sometimes. Sometimes, moments of clarity. I accept that it's just anxiety from either a touch of autism or ADHD or both that set me back for life and made me a neurotic mess for dating and jobs to a lesser extent. Always so serious, always so anxious, therefore desperate or clingy. Wait a day before calling, like hell. Picky, too. Kinda hard to live with the failure, though. My routine after work is play with my new dog a little and binge on YouTube while eating. Will probably get down on myself a few times, then try to distract with whatever live stream or how-to video I'm subscribed to. Tetris. 99. One of the few things I'm excellent at. Have gained a little weight, but still considered normal to attractive. Don't let it happen to you, younger guys. Get help. It's better now between new therapies like MMJ and starting with psilocybin if traditional drugs don't work. They don't. And different therapies like EMDR. Story 21. 30. Some days it's good, some days it's not. I like the freedom and the quietness at times, but I never knew how loud silence can actually be. Days where I worked all day and don't have time to think aren't bad. I usually just go home and watch a movie or play a game before passing out. The weekends are the worst. That's usually when I end up laying in bed until noon and counting the minutes until I go back to bed. Story 22. It's sad in here, boys. I've learned to loneliness is just solitude once you get to know yourself. I've developed many hobbies and can do a lot of things anytime I want. It's quiet. My place stays as clean as I keep it. IDK, I just look at it as enjoyable living life this way. The flexibility is unmatched. Most people I know have been divorced, at least once. And then it just complicates life further for them. It's hard to find someone to jive W your whole life, so you might as well spend time jiving with yourself. Story 23. I, 34M, am the happiest I've ever been. I legitimately told a friend tonight that I didn't even realize how happy I could be in life until this year. I'm not saying the single life is for everyone. But if you find yourself here, by choice or not, my main advice is find as many hobbies as you can and don't stop trying new things. In the recent years, I've learned to cook, bake, and make cocktails. I've been reading books, doing crossword puzzles, watching shows slash movies slash documentaries slash docuseries. I started listening to podcasts. I actively go to concerts slash shows all the time. I travel abroad one, two times a year. I'm a foodie who loves new restaurants. I'm very active and constantly trying to do things with friends. I feel so strongly that life is about experiences and trying new things and learning, which I think is why I feel so fulfilled mentally, socially, and creatively. 
Now, I do understand that I'm missing something major by not having a partner and kids, but at the same time, I have the freedom to explore every interest-slash-hobby I could imagine. I'm constantly trying new things, and some don't stick, like for me painting, drawing, rock climbing, skiing, and so much more. But the fact that I tried is more than I could have hoped. I will say if a relationship happens, I'm all in for giving it a try. But a relationship family is not the indicator of a successful life, and not my main goal in life anymore. My second piece of advice for single people. Be intentional about your home space. Your home should be the place you crave to be, the place you are excited to return to, the place you think about when you meditate. I've spent a considerable amount of time slash money slash effort making my apartment into an amazing space. It's changed my view of being by myself and what time alone could be. Don't take your surroundings for granted. In the end, being single is not sad. Being single is not a bad thing. Being single does not reflect negatively on you, your life, or your future.